Ta'ala says, and please understand this so that we can appreciate how is it that we can get close to him. He says there are two types of bounties, two types of favors. One is apparent and one is hidden. Al-Altaf al-Jaliya wal-Altaf al-Khafiya. What does this mean? Allah Taala sometimes gives us things that we appreciate and we know, yes. He has given us the ability to live in a peaceful society, a society that allows us to practice faith, and that is a blessing which is apparent. Sometimes some of his blessings are hidden, and that's in the form of misfortunes, difficulties, hardships, and calamities. If you and I are presented with a tea bag without a label, and we are told, is this tea bag one that produces dark tea or light tea? You say, I really don't know. There is only one way to find out. Place it in hot water. Allah wants you and I to go through hot water, not for him, but for us to know our weaknesses and strengths. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to go through these difficulties so that the best comes out from us, no doubt, yes? That's why there are certain individuals who have recognized when things are taken away from them, it is a test, but it indeed is good for them. It is beneficial for them, no doubt. In which way? We look at, for example, a man by the name of Abu Talha. Abu Talha was an individual who prayed to Allah with his wife for years for him to be blessed with a, a child. He was blessed with a child during the time of the Holy Prophet. And one day the child, according to Rawayat, he was maybe 10 years of age, 9, whatever, he fell ill. And Abu Talha would not go to the Salah, not go and pray behind the Prophet. The Prophet asked, where is Abu Talha? He said, he's busy because his son is ill. So he sent him a message. He said, come, join the Salatul Jama'ah. So Abu Talha leaves to the masjid. He performs Salatul Jama'ah with the Holy Prophet. It so happens Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by his will, by his decree, this young boy leaves this world. His soul is taken away. His mother, Um Talha, her husband has gone. Now, how, she, how should she deal with this? When her husband comes back, asks about his son, she says he's resting. Then she comes and sits with him. Yes, comes in a calm, full conversation. She says to him, you know, if somebody has given you an amana, trust, and you've kept it, and you don't want to give it back, is that something good? He says, no, I should be willing to give it back. If it's an amana, if it's a trust, I should not hold it for myself. After a while of conversing with him, she says that God gave us an amana. Now he's taking him back. She told him about what? About the fact that their son had passed away. When she told him this, it, it indeed reduced the impact. He was, being, he was able now to control his emotions, knowing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's wisdom is greater than what you and I think, that there is what a reason why that child had to be what taken back and his life was cut short in this particular manner and by the way according to the narwayat because of their patience and submission allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then rewarded them with several children they had several children indeed when you and i say labbayka ya hussein what does it mean it refers to the idea and the commitment to establish our relationship with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to re-examine our thinking as far as what as far as taking lessons from the 10th of muharram look at the honorable lady what she saw and what she witnessed is unparalleled, no doubt. The lady whose patient, patience itself, the virtue of patience, humbled itself before Zainab al-Kubra, no doubt. And when she was asked by the wretched uh, the governor of Kufa, Ubaidillah ibn Ziyad, Kayfa ra'ayti sun Allahi bi akhik? How did you find what God did to your brother? Ma ra'aytu illa jameela. Everything is beautiful. Why? She understands the system of creation. Everything is there for a purpose. Yes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made this what? Happen, he's allowed this to happen for a purpose. That's why Imam alayhi salam himself, the holy third Imam, what does he say? He says, Ridhan bi qadaik wa tasliman li amrik. Ridhan bi qadaik means Allah, I submit wholeheartedly to your what? To your decree. Hence, what do we find? We find that the first thing that emerges is the relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One that needs to be reflected. And when you and I say, Labbaik ya Hussein, it needs to be enhanced and developed.